Greetings in Christ. Father Jeff Hanley here, coming to you from St. Catherine of Siena Parish, just outside of our parish offices, where we have depicted here these lovely images from the life of St. Catherine of Siena. We celebrate our patroness's feast day on April 29th, on a Thursday this year. We celebrate what a great woman Catherine of Siena was. And so today, I invite you to reflect with me a little bit more on the life of St. Catherine of Siena. From these images here, we come to know some of the central virtues that were present in Catherine's life. Catherine was a visionary mystic. She had great compassion for the poor. She was an example of compassion. Catherine was a promoter of peace among kings and queens and nations. She was an ecclesial woman with a great love of the Holy Father, a great desire for his sanctity and for the sanctity of the whole church. And St. Catherine today is recognized as a doctor of the church. Catherine was born in Siena, Italy on March 25th in the year 1347. Her name at the time, Catherine Benincasa, uh, was in, came from her family's name. And at that time when she was born, there was a great plague in Italy, and half of her brothers and sisters did not survive childhood. At the age of 16, one of Catherine's older sisters also died. Her sister had been married, so their parents proposed that Catherine marry her husband as a replacement. Now, Catherine greatly opposed this for her great devotion to God. She began fasting, and she cut her hair, and would mar her appearance in other ways in order to make her less attractive to her proposed husband. Her parents, greatly disturbed by this, attempted to resist this move, but they, in the end, were unsuccessful. Her, fast, her fasting and devotion convinced them to give up and allowed her to live as she pleased. Despite Catherine's piety, she did not choose to enter a convent or become a nun. Instead, Catherine became a Third Order Dominican, a Third Order of St. Dominic, which allowed her to associate with the religious order while living at home. She would go to daily Mass and would seek out the Dominican friars for spiritual direction. At that time, Catherine developed a habit of giving things away. She continually gave away her family's food and clothing to people in need, that example of compassion, as was mentioned. Now, when Catherine turned 21, something changed. She had an experience which she described as her mystical marriage to Christ. In her vision, she was told to enter public life, to help the poor and the sick. She immediately went into public to help people in need. She often visited hospitals, and her activities quickly attracted followers who helped her in her mission to serve the poor and the sick. Catherine was given the stigmata, the wounds of Christ, and again, an example of her being a visionary mystic. But this stigmata was only visible to herself. Catherine was an avid letter writer. She wrote over 400 letters. She wrote to kings advocating for peace in their lands and wrote frequently to the Holy Father, the Pope. 
she had a great love for the Pope, but was persistent that he must return to Rome instead of living in Avignon, France. The Pope listened to her. Her letters and her other writings are recorded in books which we can find even today. They're called the Dialogues of St. Catherine of Siena. And these writings were so influential that the Church declared her a doctor of the Church and one of the patronesses of all of Europe. St. Catherine of Siena died on April 29th in the year 1380 after a prolonged illness. She passed away while she was in Rome, and from my own time in Rome, her tomb is still preserved in a church of Santa Maria Sopra Minerva. It's a church dedicated to Holy Mary, which is right next door to the Pantheon. It would be on my way to school each day, so I would frequently stop by the church and pray at her tomb, especially as when I was studying there, and I learned with great joy that I was being assigned to St. Catherine of Siena Parish. At her tomb, there is a holy card with an image of her tomb and a beautiful prayer to St. Catherine. And so as we invoke the intercession of our holy patroness on her feast day, we ask the Lord for a special outpouring of grace on our parish family and for all of those whom God has put into our life and who God is calling us to serve. So as we invoke her intercession, I invite you to pray with me this beautiful prayer, which pilgrims throughout the world pray at the tomb of St. Catherine. Let us pray. O God, who adorned Blessed Catherine with the particular privilege of virginity and of patience, and who permitted her to triumph over the assaults of evil spirits, and to remain steadfast in the love of your name. Grant, we implore you, that we, in imitation of her, the corruption of the world scorned and the dangers of all our enemies conquered, may attain your glory with certainty. We ask all of these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Feast of St. Catherine of Siena. May she pray for us now and always. Amen.